Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Strength Students Podcast. I'm your co-host, Stephen Cardi. And I'm Nicholas Scobletti. <laughs> and we are live from CrossFit Hartford. Not live. On a Monday. This is pre-recorded, so never mind. Not live. We're never, <laughs> we're never live. <laughs> it's Monday. This will be out Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, Monday. This will be out Wednesday. But you're listening to see you guys is today. Through the computer screen. That's how we see you guys every week. <laughs> through our nanny, <laughs> through the nanny cams we have set up <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, we house. got nanny cams. Uh how are you doing, man? How's training going? Fuck you. How's man. your week going? It's um, good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah it's good. I don't know. It's all right. <laughs> Star uh, Wars is coming out soon. It's yeah. Star Wars week, baby. Oh, I did follow up blood work this morning. Check the old. Is this related to Star Wars or hormones? Training? <laughs> yes, it did. Okay. The blood, <laughs> the blood test will reveal if I'm a Jedi or not. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. It's going to uh, count your metachlorians, I believe. <laughs> I don't know that for all you Star Wars fans out there. I am excited for Star Wars ever since we got I got into it. Yeah, you did get into <laughs> this it. past April on yeah. on the plane ride back from super training. Shit's gonna be dope. Shit is gonna be lit. Sunday at noon. Nice. West Hartford, if you guys want to come to the movies with us. <laughs> you guys want to yeah, live live <laughs> We're have a live show. <laughs> During Star Wars. The premiere of Star Wars The Last Jedi, two days after it premieres. Whenever they're fighting, we're gonna tell you what plane of motion they're in. Uh, our show started to gay guys to to gay guys. <laughs> our show started to gay guys. Yo, to all you gay guys out there. <laughs> yeah, Steve's got a girlfriend. Everyone, <laughs> camera's crooked. Hold on. <laughs> so is your sexuality, apparently. <laughs> uh, our show started to gay guys. Oh my god, I said it again. <laughs> Yo, what? I'm dying. I'm dead. I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> I can't pronounce it. I know. We've been waiting for this Our for years. show starter to you today, guys, <laughs> is a quote by John Wellborn, who actually John Wellborn, who the same John Wellborn who started Power Athlete. Mm-hmm. We had the two Power Athlete guys on a couple episodes ago, but Text we saw Luke. this quote on Instagram today, thought it was lit. Uh, the quote is, uh, quote, all the machines and praying in the world will not build a physique like the one crafted from lifting free weights over 85% of your 1RM. John Wellborn, power athlete. Think about that. The well, well-born identity. So we thought that was fitting, especially for what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> today we're talking about putting some mass on your ass. Ass building, glute building movements. Mm, the powerhouse of the body. Before we go into it though, quick announcements. Make sure you guys go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go ahead and like our Facebook page. Follow us on Instagram. Then to our cars. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting. Like us on Twitter. Uh, and then go ahead on over to, to Stitch Air and <laughs> iTunes. <laughs> Stitcher or whatever podcast Give us a five-star review. Or SoundCloud. And, uh, and a, nice, uh, a nice little comment. That'd be, that'd be dope. That would help us out. And a hug. Virtual, and a hug. virtual hug. And go to SoundCloud, too. We're on SoundCloud. We got to start mentioning that. SoundCloud, check us out there. And we should be on Google Play. We should we should figure that out too. Okay. Either way. <laughs> Time to slide into some DMs. Send us our news to you for this week. Mm. You know how to we everyone do. or just to gay guys. You know, <laughs> you know how we do, girl. We like to just slide in there, send you unwanted news, <laughs> like dudes like to do. Like a normal uh, millennial. This week, send news, which we are going to link in our show notes and post on our social meds and all that. Oh. Uh, eight stretches to improve pr- improve your ankle mobility by a guy named Jake Bowley. It's on barben.com. Uh, couple, a couple movements to just get your dynamically and statically get your, uh, get your ankles more mobile, right? So if you guys check out this article, I think it's great, especially before you squat, getting your ankle mobility primed up is really important or doing like Olympic lifts if you do those. Uh, I think I would say if anything, go ahead, read the article. It's great. But if anything... There are dynamic movements and static movements in this article and just in life. My rule of thumb that I usually tell people is save the dynamic stretching movements before you train and the static movements for after you train. Dynamic meaning stretches which you are still moving. Static 
stretches meaning stretches where you're just holding it for like a minute or two or whatever, right? Yeah. So think of static stretches, you're holding it. Dynamic, you're moving through that stretch, right? So put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else? We ready to hop into this thing? We, we enough of this fucking bullshit banter? <laughs> 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 fucking sick of this show. So today, guys, we have a great episode for you. We're going to go over our top five ass mass building movements mm. to build those glutes put some size on that butt put some strength in that butt put some other stuff in that butt <laughs> and well, steve's definitely into that strong apparently. lower body <laughs> uh so we are going to take a quick break when we're when we come back we're going to talk about uh our top five movements for building glutes be right back want more of the strength students podcast Go check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, make sure you leave us a five-star review on iTunes and on Stitcher. Stitcher, I just met her. All right, everybody. <clears throat> we are back. We are here talking about each of our top five ass mass glute building movements. Top five. Exercises. Top five, top five, top five. Top five, top five. <laughs> So, Nick, let's start with you, man. What are your top five ass mass build, <laughs> glute building movements? <laughs> Number one, sumo rack pulls or sumo deadlift from an elevated surface, blocks, whatever. Um, I like that movement. My first two are going to be there. This is more of a like heavier mass movement, I wouldn't say. You can do them for high reps, but um, with, with pulling and stuff like that, I'd prefer uh, a little heavier like fives and stuff like that just to add some muscle density. Mm. Um, that is my number one. Um, I love that one. Go right into number two, or do you want to go? Yeah. Rip it. Okay. Yeah, you, yours right first. Uh, my number two is wide box squats. Why the wide box squat? Well, so the, wide meaning like your feet are feet, you're doing yeah, box the squats, box your itself feet are isn't wide. wide. Your feet are wide. Okay. 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 Feet are wide apart. Um, I don't care if it's... I don't the care. wider the box, the better. <laughs> just sitting on a car. <laughs> just on the trunk of a it's car. It's not fucking working! <laughs> <laughs> so wide box squats with... Uh, make sure you really have a negative shin angle. You're really reaching back to the box as opposed to just like plopping down on the box. Right. Control on the way down, explode on the way up. Um, I like the box squat for multiple reasons. And the, the man who made the box squat famous, Louis Simmons... Um, always says, you know, it's kind of like a plyometric for your ass in a way. Um, you're taking a lot of stuff out of it. You're not too worried about depth. Um, this box is another, that's another thing. It doesn't have to be a, a super ass to grass deep squat. It's just, you're worried about reaching back, um, breaking up the eccentric concentric cycle there and exploding off the box and squeezing your butt as hard as possible. Um, those are again, heavier movements are done for speed, things like that. I like those again, you can always do something for reps, but, um, volume, you know, will always crush you if, if you're not re ready for it. I've never done it before. Um, I like those to be a little heavier. Number three, frog pumps, <laughs> AKA frog jumps, <laughs> <laughs> which is what I thought which they were. was a mistext by me. So um, this is what you do is you just turn yourself into a frog wheel real quick, jump into a lake or then, a pond and then jump yes. out. You, when, when you get out, you hope a princess kisses Sucks you. Sucks your face. <laughs> 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 okay. Then you turn into not a frog anymore. <laughs> uh, frog pumps. This was made famous by Brett Contreras. I think they're the glute guy. They're definitely the funniest ass movement you can do. Uh, they've been shown to activate the most amount, uh, the most muscle fibers in your glutes, frog pumps. Basically, mm. you're on the ground like you're going to do a glute bridge. You're flat on your back. Your feet are, I'm trying to explain this without showing. So free, feet are turned out. So bottoms of your feet are touching and you're kind of like making a little diamond with your legs and you're pushing up on like the outsides of your feet. Mm. Um, and it literally just looks like you're humping the fucking air. Um you could put a dumbbell on there. You could do it with bands, whatever. Have you seen that hip thruster thing? But you could do a, a lot of guys put a dumbbell on there, so it just looks like you're humping a dumbbell. Um, but if you do these for, I like these for higher reps, kind of finishers, uh, like 50, 100 reps, stuff like that. Um, mm. So I think it's, I think it's a valuable movement. And I really like it. Uh, number four, single leg hip bridge. So glute bridge, just you're doing one leg at a time. So you can either start on your back. Or I like back up against the bench and you're bridging yourself up from there. Um, so bridging like uh, just to like for people who don't know it. So bridging you're laying on your back and you're just with you're pushing your, through your. So you're laying, I'm laying on your back, driving through your heel and pushing your hips up to the sky. Word. You're just on just flatten your back. 
Um, again, those are like eight to 10 per leg. I like those a lot. Um, you could also do them on the bench and what we'll, we're going to come out with a, uh, program or, uh, butt program tonight. I'm going to write that shit and, um, we'll have demos for all this. So if you're like, Oh my God, what is this? I don't know. You could always Google it, but we will have a program for you. Um, I like the single leg hip bridge just to get um, folks on one leg versus the other. You could definitely mm. notice imbalances when you do that shit too. <laughs> You'll be like, wow, my right glute doesn't, you know, doesn't work as well as my left. Um, and last but not least, my favorite movement of all time forever and ever is the kettlebell swing. Mm. Um, this is, this gets butchered a lot, but doing the kettlebell swing like a, almost like a box squat. You'll have a negative shin angle on the way down. You're reaching back with your hips. You're not doing it upright. You're not doing it like a squat. It's a explosive hip hinge. Um, and also, you don't need to bring the kettlebell overhead. We're not worried about that. We're worried about your butt. We're not worried about <laughs> thoracic extension on the kettlebell swing. Um, so I like that for multiple reasons. Um, it's a good conditioning tool, number one. Another great finisher. Um, great grip tool. But also, it's the overspeeded uh, eccentric portion. And as we've covered, just like in our last episodes with the three muscle phases, eccentric mm-hmm. is essentially what damages the muscle, what tears it down. Uh, it's up to you to build it up by eating enough and all that stuff. Um, but I love the overspeed eccentrics. It will it will help your strength. It will help muscle growth. Um, I think that movement is uh, key. So those are my five. Just to wrap up, my top five are sumo rack pulls, Wide box squats, it means your feet are wide, not the actual box. Frog pumps, single leg hip bridge, and kettlebell swings. Those are my top five, top five, top five. Top five, five, top five, top five. (laughs) Beautiful. And my top five ass mass glute building movements. Uh, Number one, we're going to start off with the deep back squat. All right, so... Uh, specifically deep here, right? So we're not looking for we're not looking for parallel, yo. We're looking to get full glute engagement by going Dips. ass to grass here. If you're asking yourself, well, should I do this with 95% of my one RM? Uh, I mean, if you can't, then no. What's up? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry, I could edit that out. Dude. <laughs> we don't need to. Uh, we're so. If we're talking deep back squat, we're going below parallel here, right? So we're looking for that full glute engagement. So this might be something where uh, you're fully comfortable with, you're fully comfortable doing, um, getting into that deep position. But if you're a parallel back squatter, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with that. In this case, if you're a parallel uh, back squatter, you might want to consider taking off a bunch of weight on your back squat and just practice getting depth, right? So if we're specifically talking about uh, glute development, you want to go ass to grass, baby. Number two, number dose, Bulgarian split squats, all right? Also known as rear foot elevated split squats. So essentially a lunge with your back foot up on a box, right? So try to go as heavy or as you bench. can here. Yeah, or a bench or whatever you could put your foot on. You put it on the- Or on your significant other. Yeah, you could put it on your friend. You could put it on a box. <laughs> <laughs> you could put it on your car. However you want to do it. Put it on a guy you just met at TGI Fridays. So now, same concept here is the deep back squat, right? We want to get that lunge as deep as we can, and the elevation of your rear foot is allowing you to go into almost like a negative lunge space, so you could really get a lot of depth. Um, And like I said, same idea here. You want to go as deep as possible. Get that full glute engagement, except now we're taking it to uh, a single leg uh, dynamic, essentially, right? We're doing a essentially a one-legged squat, so... We are targeting one side of the body versus the other. Pretty simple stuff, right? Instead of hitting both cheeks at once, you're hitting <laughs> two cheeks independently, which is definitely, definitely beneficial. Especially there. when it comes to building those, those butts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number three is a glute ham raise, right? So whether you uh, have a GHD machine or an actual glute ham raise machine, uh, or if you don't even have any of those, you could even do like a, a leaning tower or like a partner, um, what the fuck are those called? Nordic hamstring curl. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, if you don't have a glute ham raise, you could do, uh, this version of it. Essentially your ankles or feet locked into place. You're laying face down on the, the GHT machine and you are hinging at the hips, like you're deadlifting forward and then using your entire posterior chain to raise your upper body as high as you can. Right. So you're essentially teaching your butt, right? You're activating your butt to essentially lift your entire upper body, right? Using the hamstring, using the glutes to lift your entire upper body. Also, you could add weight to this, but this is also good because 
it's a very challenging body weight movement for your body, which also allows you to do high volume, right? Which is going to be uh, pretty fundamental when it comes to hypertrophy, right? Yeah. Building muscle, high reps, right? This isn't, you could add weight to it, like I said, but if you're doing just body weight, you could crush sets of like 20 to 30 of these and really, really tap into like the hypertrophy of your glutes without fucking yourself up because, you know, yeah. it's pretty much just body weight. And it's also, I mean, you could use an eccentric, but this is for the most part a concentric movement. So you're not, the wear and tear isn't, isn't as crazy. So you can get the high volume in. Yes. Also, I want to add one thing to that. Go ahead, so dude. if you don't have someone to hold your ankles down or you don't have a GHR, you could buy those little glider things. Um, and you could go on your back and do kind of hamstring curls oh, like yeah. that. If, um, cool. you know, it's cheap. You'll go buy those things that you'd, uh, moving uh, sliders. Yeah, like the moving sliders and you put your heels on it. Word. Um, if you are solo, then that's probably, you know, on solo. So- <laughs> <laughs> not till Sunday, man. <laughs> Uh, number four, monster walks. All right. So, and these, these are also known as, um, what the fuck with the hip circle? What are they also called? Remind me again. Glute walks. Band walks. Band walks, I guess. Anything, All right. Yeah. I don't know. So yeah, these can either be done with a hip circle or a regular band, right? So the hip circle is the band that you put around your knees. I don't know if you've seen, if you've seen people doing this with the band around their knees and they're kind of just like walking side to side. That's essentially what a monster walk is. A uh, monster walk, you would be doing the same thing, except the band is around your foot and you're holding the band with your hands. And essentially, same idea as the glute ham raise, right? You're using a band, so you're not you're not using you're not using weight here. Uh, so it allows you to do high volume, right? So you could you could target that uh, target that or signal that hypertrophy in in your ass muscles because you could do a lot of reps because it's you're not using weight, you're using a band. But essentially, either a band around your knees or a band around your feet. And keeping your toes as straight as they can, walking laterally from side to side, right? So I'm taking my right foot, stepping out as far as I can with my right foot, then bringing my left foot back in, step to the right as many times I need to, 20, 30 times, and then same thing to the left. Uh, I do this a lot with the people I train, and their ass always burns after. And the key with this is keeping your feet straight, right? So if you open your toe, you open your foot. So if you kind of like turn your toe out and do these to a 45, you're not going to get the same effect. You're not going to feel the, that same burn in your ass as if your feet are straight completely. So that's my number four. And then number five is the reverse hyper on the GHD. So just like number three are glute ham rays, except you're backwards. Oh, shit. You're like an upside down land. Reverse like cowgirl. Reverse cowgirl. <laughs> Great for ass building. <laughs> so the reverse hyper on the GHD, you're essentially, instead of your ankles locked into the GHD, you're holding on to the GHD machine and your, your legs are now coming off the back and you're essentially raising your, you're using your hip hinge to raise your lower body, right? So you're keeping your legs straight. You're using your, uh, your hips and your ass to raise your lower body, right? This is actually, uh, an awesome movement because it teaches you to squeeze your ass at the top, right? So you're really locking out and finishing that full range, which, uh, the squeezing and, and uh, that full range is not only great for hypertrophy, but it's uh, a great teaching tool, I think, for the lockout and your squat and your deadlift as well. So not only building the hypertrophy in your butt with that last one, the reverse hyper, but uh, also uh, helping teach the lockout and helping your body uh, uh, perform the lockout better, if you will, for the back squat and the, and the deadlift. Get Hell you to lock yeah. that shit out. Mm. So those are our top five each. <laughs> top five, top five. So what we're going to be doing, guys, we're going to be putting a program out there with all these movements on them. Uh, so you guys will be able to put some mass on your ass on your own. We'll also be posting the videos of these, the do's and don'ts of, of each of these movements. So uh, stay tuned for that. And before we sign off here, guys, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do our quick closing segment, and then we'll wrap you guys up and send you on your way. So we'll be right back. Peace. <laughs> Reese's Pieces. Men in Black. <laughs> Two. Want more of the Strength Students Podcast? Go check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, make sure you leave us a five-star review on iTunes and on Stitcher. Stitcher, I just met her. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Strength Students Podcast. And we are wrapping you up from today's episode about it's putting some mass condom. on your ass. Mm, the glute, peaches. Glute gains, baby. A lot of peach emojis peach on emojis Instagram this week. This week. Let's go. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so yeah, quick reminder, guys, we're going to be posting a uh, ass mass glute gaining program. So be on the lookout for that. We're going to post that this week. Hopefully you guys join, uh, enjoyed the arm farm program. Yes. We're going to get uh, basically the arm farm of your ass this week. So <laughs> we're going to post that. <laughs> And as well as glute gourd. as well as a video on our YouTube, kind of demonstrating and going through each of the movements we talked about, the do's and don'ts, proper technique, things like that. Okay. Before we wrap up here, we're gonna close off with the Star Wars segment. Who would you be and why? Right. We got the Last Jedi coming out on Sunday. I'm super pumped. New Star Wars fan Nick over here, super pumped. Yeah. So now I'm we're like struggling to, to think of characters. Got so. our tickets ready to rock. What you don't know? I think I know. Oh, okay. But would I want you, like you to, to go, go first. first. You want me to go first? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Who would I be and why? I would be Kylo Ren. Knew it. Yeah, I knew it. Fuck. Guy Kylo sucks. Ren, Kylo Ren gets a lot of hate, man. <laughs> Kylo Ren is a character in Star Wars. gets a lot of hate. And I'm with him, man. I, I feel his struggle. I think Kylo Ren is a character that symbolizes what a lot of people go through on a daily basis. He's a huge pussy. The struggle between dark and light. <laughs> I don't like him. I want to be bad because it gives me so much power, but I have so much good in me. You know, that's like mm. a common, that's like a relatable feature. I could see that. You know, and I also, I also, uh, I also kind of empathize with him, you know, like he's got all this pressure on him to, to be Darth Vader. And it's like, dude, you don't have to be Darth Vader. You can just be yourself. What I always say is, don't you know that your grandpa, Darth Vader, killed the emperor. Right. And saved your uncle Luke. Right. So what are you, yeah, what are you doing? That's did my, you did you not know that part of the story? You know that's, that's what I no. I'm with you. I'm saying I'm with you. I agree. Yeah, I don't think he, there's no way he knows. Like, I'll, like, I'll avenge you. It's like yo, he fucking killed I the think, emperor yeah, himself he, and saved your uncle Luke. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, they like had a do. They had a solid moment, and then you're true, like, but, uh, grandpa. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's what the that's what the dark side does to you, though. I mean, regardless or uh, regardless of talking about CrossFit. I mean, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> regardless, Everyone relax. It's a joke. It's a joke. Regardless of how he feels, like he has the dark side in him, whether he likes it or not. It's motherfucking Anakin Skywalker. It's like, it's like being it's like me. It's like being Sicilian. You're just gonna be angry. No matter what, for no reason, <laughs> <laughs> just get angry. Yeah. So Kylo Ren's my guy. Also, I think he has a super dope lightsaber, and he's just out there, man. He's out there trying to do his thing. Just he's. He, I like his character because it's undeveloped, right? He he's yeah. one of the first Sith lords, or probably not even a lord yet, I guess. But he's one of the first Sith who, like, he's not fully developed, right? Like, we always see all these these uh, villains and Sith lords, and they're they're fully developed, right? They're at their full power. This dude is still in training, right? So this is th- he's an interesting character to me, a, a Sith, uh, it, part of the dark side who's still like in his training. So that intrigues me. So I think he's dope. Plus, he's got dope hair. Yeah. Now me, huh? Now you. <laughs> Who would you be and why if you could be a Star Wars <sighs> character? Oh, man. I would be... You're already Chewbacca. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be Luke Skywalker because my dad cut my arm off when I was a kid. <laughs> no. <laughs> incorrect. Sad story. Incorrect. 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 Um, to be honest, I you know who I like the most? This is going to be weird, but... <laughs> <laughs> the um oh, I forget his damn name. The black stormtrooper from the last movie. <laughs> Finn. There you go. Finn. He FN was, 218. He was raised to like just do all this stuff and be a certain way, like part of the stormtroopers. I'm pretty sure he was I'm pretty sure the way the new stormtroopers work are they're like they they're, get, they're they just get like stolen. sold. Yeah, or sold or stolen into being a stormtrooper. Yeah. And they're just like born into it. Right. So he was born into this craziness and that he sucks. just was like you know what? Nah, this ain't right. And mm. he's kind of going on his own and went against, I mean, went against the uh, the dark side. So I really like his character. Yeah, but, dude. He like, I was watching, I was thinking about that last night, his character. That's kind of cool. Like how they threw that in there. The first stormtrooper to be like, yo, fuck this. I'm out, dude. <laughs> like, we're like, this is crazy. Like, and it's why am I, why they am made, I doing this? They made the stormtrooper so, they made it like a relevant part. They made a stormtrooper a relevant part of the storyline usually i mean stormtroopers they're like, they're like idiots stormtroopers are the most are like one of the most recognizable and and you know famous parts of star wars 
but they're not very significant. They never really happen. <laughs> they never do it, dude. Every part, <laughs> every they're movie. Fucking idiots. Yeah, they're like, oh, what's going on over here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they always get. Yeah, we'll check it out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they always get. Dude, bored. I was literally looking at one of the pictures from A New Hope, the first Star Wars ever made, and they're. I always forget about this, but the fucking blooper that I don't think was ever actually taken out of the movie where the stormtrooper fucking nails his head on the door because it, it wasn't open. And he, you could like kind of notice it in the background, but it's yeah. just, he just n- smashes his head on the door that's unopened. It's like, these guys are literally idiots. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But like they made him, they made the stormtrooper like a, uh, they yeah, made I like, like him. A, like a he, significant part of the storyline. He could have easily gone along with, you know, what he was doing and how he was raised, but he decided to... Uh, branch out Deviate. do his own thing word. i identify <laughs> word uh favorite star wars movie have you seen them all yet the ones <laughs> you told me to skip the ones with like sam jackson and all of them i know roughly, no, i wouldn't i didn't tell you to do that. i thought you said they sucked. No, i wouldn't because i like those more i'm in the minority i like those more than the old ones yeah so i, I maybe it was it. nate write me hate mail it was probably yeah it was probably nate. um but i know now i know roughly what happened but i really i mean dude i watched rogue one twice on the way back from california because it was on the planes yeah like, and i had to watch it and it didn't finish the first <laughs> plane ride <laughs> so i had to watch it again i thought that was cool because it's a i mean it's a standalone and it begins mm. like it starts the it's just cool yeah everyone dies my favorite one is always going to be Revenge of the Sith, episode three, when Anakin finally makes it over to the dark side. That's the, the fucking most critical movie of all of them. Yeah, when, in he, my opinion. when he gets fucked up. It's when Anakin turns into Darth Vader. It's like, what the fuck? That's the most critical one of all of them. I've seen that scene, but I haven't seen the movie. You've seen that scene? <laughs> I seen it. What color lightsaber would you have? Pink. Pink? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> black. <laughs> like, wow. So I wear black. No. Um... That's hard. You go first. Um, I would probably have uh, either a blue one or a purple one. Mm. Blue one would probably match my my look more. <laughs> What's your look? Purple one's my favorite because <laughs> of the Red, Vikings. White, and blue. Oh, <laughs> I get it. Blue's just I, I go well with blue. I feel like. I wanted something like, yeah, I like red. I really like red. Oh, so you're a Sith Lord. I just like red. It's fucking... So I'm insane. reading a... Red I'm, and black go so well. I'm reading a comic about Darth Vader High school right now. colors. It's like a standalone comic about Darth Vader, and it's it takes place like after the episode three where he first becomes Darth Vader, and he has to go like earn his lightsaber. And apparently, and I never knew this until I started reading this, the crystal that's inside the lightsaber is called the Caber, Caber Crystal. It doesn't start off red. Like a Sith has to turn that crystal red with his like rage and hate. Oh my! So he has God. to. What he has to do is steal a lightsaber or get a lightsaber from, from a somewhere else. Man. Like steal a lightsaber from a Jedi. That's what Vader has to do in this comic. He has to get his lightsaber by stealing it from a Jedi and then converting the color of the crystal from green to red, just with straight fear and anxiety and depression and anger. <laughs> That's how the red lightsaber comes around. So that's Star Wars fact of the day. All right, guys, enough bullshit. Uh, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure you guys go iTunes, Stitcher, leave us a five-star review. Uh, we appreciate all your views, all your listens. We love you guys so much. Yeah, we do. For Keep real. on listening, Thank man. You. Keep on going. Uh, we've been getting a lot more subscribers on YouTube and listeners on, on uh, PodTrack, and it's like, that's fucking awesome. We're glad you guys are enjoying it. So, And then we're going to do the glute video, and I'm going to wear Princess Leia's golden bikini while right. I do it. Exactly. So we got it subscribers size. are about to take a big jump right about now. About to get it. Social media guys, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Strength Students Podcast, and also check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Pornhub. <laughs> and we will see you guys next week. And RedTube. Peace. Bye. Deuces. Want more of the Strength Students Podcast? Go check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, make sure you leave us a five-star review on iTunes and on Stitcher. Stitcher, I just met her.